I've been playing Ark the Lad because you have no time to game. Welcome to my next When the Credits Roll review, a series in which I only review a game once I've seen the credits roll, so you can have some faith that I actually have some idea of what I'm talking about. Sometimes. So, the basic game info is Ark the Lad was released on June 30th, 1995 in Japan, translated by Working Designs in 2002. It was developed by G-Craft and published by Sony, and it took me roughly 10 hours to complete. So, this is the tale of Ark the Lad, and it centres around, surprisingly, a lad named Ark, and a girl called Kukuru, and the friends they gather along the way. Kukuru is a priestess of sorts and sent out by an old clan to keep a sacred fire at the top of a mountain alive. But due to having misgivings and some other manipulations, she puts out the fire instead, unleashing a horde of monsters. But at the same time, a ten-year-old prophecy is coming to fruition, as Ark sets out to find out what happened to his father, arriving at the mountain just in time for the monsters to be unleashed. He manages to reignite the fire and stop the monsters, but this feat doesn't go unnoticed. So, he manages to reignite the fire and stop the monsters due to some inf intervention of some sort from otherworldly powers. This feat of defeating the monsters doesn't go unnoticed, as the kingdom he lives near hears about his ability to fight the monsters, which they're having a real problem with, because they don't seem to be able to hurt them, and their people just keep dying. And thus, he receives summons, and begins his true adventure to find out what's going on and stop the monsters and humans from destroying the world. The story is a bit of a MacGuffin hunt, in some sense, seeing Ark and his friends travelling the land and unco uncovering a sinister plot. It's got a big theme of humanity's treatment of nature playing a part, and all the other normal nonsense, the power of friendship and all that sort of stuff. Overall, I find it to be a pretty enjoyable romp. Gameplay-wise, normally I talk about the things you can get up to outside the battle, and well, Ark is a little light in this respect. As beyond story scenes, uh, with the occasional actual cutscene, you just have the world map, which is a series of nodes on said map, with a couple of them actually being explorable, but you can't really do much in these explorable ones. You just kind of walk around and talk to some people and activate a battle. <laughs> There are some side quests that you can do at some of the nodes. Mostly these are just a series of battles, such as the arena offering one-on-one -on -one fights, the temple offering ever-increasing difficulty of fights. You can also do some answering questions there as well. Um, but keep your eye out for these particular nodes because they are a good place to grind a little. Some of the other nodes are just repeating battles, again, so you can grind. The grinding in this game isn't too egregious though. You just have to do it a little bit, cause depending on how things go. Like personally, I found my characters fell behind Ark in level by almost 20 levels at one point. I still don't know how that happened. So I just had to bring them up and having like five levels is quite a big difference in power. Um, these repeatable battles as well tend to have treasure chests that you can farm for items if you need to. The battles themselves are a pretty fun affair. It follows the Shining Force philosophy as opposed to say the Fire, Fire Emblem or Final Fantasy Tactics style. So it has a mixed speed based turn order, um, meaning that one of your guys could go, then one of the enemies could go, then two of your guys could go. Like it's not the classic all of your team goes and all of their team goes, it's a mixed turn order. Uh, but being an oldie you don't actually get to see the turn order anywhere unfortunately. And as soon as you get control of a character, uh, walk around a grid, as opposed to selecting move and then selecting the tile, and your character then moves to said tile. So this is more again like Shining Force, where you get to wander around the area you can move in. To attack, you simply walk up to the enemy and press the attack button. It's not like an option in the menu, you just press a button. Um, but you do have skills that you can use off instead of attacking, and all the characters have unique skills that are required by leveling up in most cases. One of the characters unlocks new skills by finding uh, instruments, and then those skills level up. 
Uh, so yeah, as I said, the skills themselves can level up as well as your character's level. So I believe they all have three levels and they get progressing more powerful as the levels go up. And you can also obviously use items and there's quite a variety of items in this game. It's not just your basic health potions, there's bombs and all sorts. And if it's a repeatable battle, you can run away. Uh, you can also choose not to go into a repeatable battle at the start of the battle. It should be noted that each character does feel quite different, so you'll probably lean on more of the ones that match your playstyle than the others, thus them gaining more levels due to usage. As the game has the individual XP system, so basically when one of your characters takes an action, damages the enemies, only they gain XP, as opposed to some games where the whole team gains XP for like at the end of the battle. So this means that some characters, like I said, can over out level others. I had, like I said, I had an instance where Ark out leveled everyone by about 20 levels. Um, and um, by the end, I think he was in his 40s and everyone else was in their 30s. But anyway, what's good about the game? Personally, I enjoyed the visuals. And once I had it down, I really enjoyed the gameplay. It's a simple system, but because of the uniqueness of each character, there's quite a lot of variety. And the game really doesn't overstay its welcome. So the story doesn't have much filler that holds it up. It's just it's one, one thing after another, apart from when you have to stop to do a bit of grinding. But for every good out there, there's usually a negative. And in this case, and in this case, like while I said the grind isn't egregious, it does feel kind of out of place somewhat. And a little bit of better balancing could have removed this entirely from the game, especially considering how short the game is. In a long... In a longer game, I feel it wouldn't have been noticed as much, but because there's, it's such a short game, it has limited places, it can feel repetitive because you are literally doing the same thing over and over again. You're not fighting lots of different enemies, you're fighting the same ones. Uh, the plot can feel a bit preachy as well about the whole humans are bad element, and humans are destroying nature element. I mean, that's what it is though, isn't it? Um, and being an older game, some of the UI elements are a little lacking information or when it is, it might not be obvious where to see it, such as the items you can equip. Um, every character can equip several items, and if you don't know press to press one of the buttons that brings up the item's information, you'll never know what the item actually does. It took me a little bit of fun, like time to figure out where that was. I'd gone a bit into the game of just randomly equipping items yeah, <laughs> it's what it is. So my conclusion is that this is a great addition to the tactics genre, and it's an absolute disgrace it never made it to Europe. Working Design's translation is as good as always, and the visuals for an old PSX game is pretty good. Basically, if you're looking for something to fill a gap after playing a bigger, longer title, then Art the Lad can fit in nicely. So my final rating is give it a go.